Welcome back everybody. Welcome back. Finally I get to do this series that I've been telling you all that I've, <laughs> I'm gonna do. So how to hone a razor and the first installment of this journey and it's, it was gonna be a short series but I figured that we're gonna go step by step from the beginning. What do we need? How do we do it? And then the, the result we're gonna shave with this razor. Um, and then I'm probably gonna do a, a sister series on a little bit more advanced tips as we go. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep this one as basic as possible. Uh, as possible for me, I love talking so I might just start rambling. So we're gonna talk about today is what do you need? Um, for those that are seasoned owners, please help. Uh, comment below, make sure you subscribe to my channel, but comment below and help those that are looking for some guidance and knowledge as we were years ago. So I've been honing for about five years and I first started learning by just watching videos like you are doing right now. So because I learned that way, I would like to transmit what I learned so far and how I do it. Um, there's many ways to do it, but it's how I do it. So what do we need? I'm trying to hurry up here. <laughs> what do we need? First thing we need is a razor. A razor. So I recommend you do not go out of your way to buy a hundred dollar razor, uh, two hundred dollar razor, and learn how to hone it. Uh, that is not good. <laughs> there's a learning curve. And uh, and you don't want to be messing with a, with a very nice razor. So I recommend ZY430 or 470. That is the brand, ZY. You can look for it in eBay and Amazon. Just put ZY, Z as in zebra and Y as in Yankee. Um, just straight razor, ZY, and it'll show up. They're under 10 bucks and they're awesome, right? So why, if they're so awesome for learning, are awesome for learning. Um, why I'm doing this with a gold dollar? I'm doing it because of this. I had like 17 of these laying around. Um, but the problem with the gold dollar is the geometry, and we'll talk a little bit more about the geometry. But if you are using a gold dollar, you have to make sure that you get rid of the stabilizer um, over here, the shoulder grind it a little bit there's work to be done on it and there's ways to get around that but uh, I'm trying to teach you guys the right way on a razor that doesn't need work so that's another thing these videos are gonna be strictly on a razor that does not need work meaning you do not need to change geometry on it you it doesn't have a big dent uh, cracked or anything like that we'll make videos we'll get there um, we'll get there I promise uh, one day <laughs> So that's the first thing you need you need a razor, right? So The second thing you need is your favorite beverage Juice soda water water because this is in You you want to have fun you want to enjoy what you're doing uh, Most and I speak by experience most of us that home razors we just do it for the love of honing. It's weird. Uh, but we don't do it because we have to. Uh, you know, obviously, if you want to maintain your razors, then you have to, but you can send it out. Uh, we do it because we enjoy what we do. So make sure you do. Make sure you enjoy it. All right. So other than the straight razor, what else do we need? So we need a couple of things. And before I get into the stones, um, this is not an absolute need, but this will actually help quite a bit. And it's a jeweler's uh, loop, and they look somewhat like that. And this one is a 4EX. Um, you open it. These are so cheap, so cheap. It has a little light, and this we use to look at the edge as you are honing and progressing and seeing the status, right? Um, and we'll get there. Do you need this? No, I honed for like a year 
before I even bought one of these. Not because I was cheap, but be maybe because I'm cheap. But these are like less than 10 bucks in Amazon. So these are a good idea. Not a must need, but a great idea. A lot of people are, have moved from this to USB loops uh, or microscopes or fancy ones. Um, you can do that too. But we'll talk about how to use these properly in the next uh, videos because there is a little trick to it. <laughs> what else do we need? We need wet stones or oil stones. Um, but in this in this uh, case, we're gonna be using wet stones. What is the difference between a wet stone and an oil stone? You use oil with the oil stone and with the wet stone, you use water mm, for the most part. So uh, keeping it basic, we're gonna be using wet stones and Right now, I have a DMT-325. Now, if you have not watched my video on how to maintain uh, your stones, I recommend you go. It's in the same playlist uh, and check it out after we talk about this, right? <laughs> but just go over there because you need to prepare all of these stones for the stray razor. Dealing with a stray razor is not the same as dealing with a, with a uh, a pocket knife or, or kitchen knife. These stones, you want to keep them as flat as possible. It's not going to be all 100% flat, but you want to keep them as flat as possible. So that's why the DNT diamond plate comes into play. This is my preferred one. Uh, Atomas are great too. I love them, but I this plate, I had it for a long time. And so this is the one I use. I recommend either Atomas or DNTs in that case. And then this plate will help you maintain and flatten or lap, we call it lapping, our stones in preparation to the stray razor. Another item that I don't have here that is uh, a nicety or something that a lot, some people use is uh, electrical tape. Electrical tape. So, electrical tape because some people will. Um, yeah, let me show you here. So, you see this razor. So, first off, this is the spine. And if you see here, alongside the spine, that is called spineware. It is worn because I use this a lot for testing. But as this is wearing, the edge is wearing with it so it's changing this way and the angle is changing uh it's not changing it's staying uh, as true as possible from the beginning because they're wearing together right if you use tape you tape the spine to protect the spine a lot of people use it when you have nice razors um you will be just eating away the metal in this side right on the edge so tape, if you will like to use tape, you can use tape for all this process. I do not like to use tape anymore. I do use it sometimes on a brand new razor to set the bevel. And we'll talk about setting the bevel later. So, um, so what else? Whetstones. Whetstones. So what kind of whetstones do I need, Rob? Tell me what to buy. And that... I will not do. I can tell you which ones I like and I will refer you to my videos on all the stones that I have used. So right now I have a, uh, a set of artificial or synthetic whetstones. These are made, man-made, and these are the ones I'm going to teach you or uh, you're going to follow along in this series on how to do a stray razor. There are many, many ways utilizing natural stones, utilizing uh, synthetics and then naturals and so forth. But in this case, we're gonna use th synthetics because synthetics are very consistent and they're very easy to use compared to some uh, natural stones. Uh, some natural stones are easy to use as well. But for sake of consistency and uh, time sake, and keeping it basic, we're gonna do this in synthetic. Do I recommend you start with synthetic? I recommend you start with some synthetics, uh, especially the bottom 
portion of the honing process and I'm gonna talk about that in a second so when we hone we need to set a bevel and to set the bevel and a lot of these terms are gonna be if you are brand new to this brand new to this uh, we will discuss that as we go but to set the bevel we use low grit uh, abrasion we use 1000 uh, uh, grit stones and this is a Chosera 1000 stone made by Naniwa uh, now I said that like we're authority you don't have to use a 1000 some people use an 800 or a 1200 or a 2000 I recommend a 1000 this is why I recommend have I used other things yes I have used many different ones uh, I like the 1000 which 1000 I recommend uh, Nani was um, and I have a bunch of videos on that so check it out I have a, a bunch of videos on bevel setting uh, in bevel setters that are uh, economical and some that are more pricey but so we need a 1000 stone for this particular series right we need a bevel setter the other thing we need is a sharpening stone well you said we're gonna be sharpening this razor so are we not sharpening uh, with the one case uh, technically you're not uh, semantics right we are going to set the bevel and when we set the bevel and I'll explain that in my very next video we are just aligning we are making that edge into a point and I'm not gonna go more into that so let me, let's move that this way so then we're gonna do some sharpening and sharpening is done in the mid level uh, grid we call it mid uh, but a lot of uh, knife sharpening guys will be finishing in what we call mid. Uh, so for mid, I have here we're gonna be using uh, Goken Hayabusa. These are made by Naniwa, and we're gonna be using a 4,000 grit stone. I recommend you use anything from 3,000 to 5,000. 3,000 are, are great, Naniwa Super Stones are awesome. 4,000 Naniwa. Goken Hayabusa's are awesome. Norton 4K, Shaptons, uh, Naniwa Chosera, or Professional Series. Uh, they have a 5K, which is amazing. Anything from one to five will do, right? So that's what you need. If you're doing it all synthetic, right? We'll go into detail on how to do this with natural stones as well but this is what we're going to be using and then we're going to be using uh 8000 stone to follow that and it's uh, from the same series and this is a goken fuji 8000 stone there's a lot of 8000 stones out there and uh, that they are fantastic shaptons and shapton has like four versions and naniwa has like four versions of all that right so now very important not every company follows the same grit standard, all right? So 8,000 in Naniwa is not exactly the same as an 8,000 Chapton. Uh, it's similar, but it's not the same. Uh, 8,000 Naniwa, for the most part, is less abrasive than an 8,000 Chapton. But semantics, around 8,000 is what we're gonna need, right? And then, we need a finishing stone, right? And now when I say finishing stone is, it is weird because at the 8,000 level, you could shave comfortably depending on what 8,000 stone you have and if you did all your work. So an 8,000 could be your finisher. Uh, I shaven out of this 8000 many times and it's great uh, I can do that just fine but uh, life is too short to be shaving with something that is okay or good even great so you want to strive for outstanding right so you go with something higher so this is a 12,000 stone made by Naniwa and this says Goken Kagayaki 
but it's just the same as a 12,000 uh, super stone made by Naniwa. Same stone. I have a video on it where I prove it. Check it out. It is the same stone. So those are the stones we need. This is the equipment that you're gonna need. What else you're gonna need? You're gonna need a towel to dry yourself. You're gonna need a social water and you're gonna need a flat surface, right? So I do it in the kitchen. If you do it in the kitchen, make sure you clean up after yourself. It's gonna make a mess and your spouse might not like you. So guys and gals, if you are honing, uh, this is the first video of many other videos to come. Next video, we're gonna be setting a bevel on this racer. We're gonna be talking in depth on how to set the bevel, which stones I recommend, and uh, little tips here and there. But before I leave, you might be thinking like, man, but I was shopping and I saw some stones that go under 1,000. Are those not good for stray racers? And my answer is yes, they're very good for stray racers. I have one here, this is a Chapton. And any stone under 1,000 you can still use. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna assume that you went and bought a ZY470 and that's, that razor does not need any hard abrasion. <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna start with the 1K. But these come really, really handy when you have a small microchip and stuff like that. They come really, really handy. It makes setting the bevel really easy but they will eat metal faster and that's why I don't recommend you starting with one of these because if you're not careful you destroy that racer really quick so guys thank you for watching I will see you in the next video where we're gonna start actually sharpening and honing this stray racer thank you for watching keep watching subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.